What's up YouTube? So today I had another video released to make sure you watch that, but now we're going to talk about knee injuries, jumper's knee, and what to do to strengthen and keep it from happening. So for those who maybe don't have any knee injuries now, or you don't see them now, but knee injuries are always prone to happen. So it's best to take care of it now and then wait for a situ situation to come to hand and you're dealing with an injured knee. So uh, before I get started, I kind of want to tell you about my story and uh, how I got the knee injury. Um, years ago in high school, um, I've told you about my high school experience with basketball, football, and, and in one of my last videos about in basketball, how I would just randomly dunk on people. Um, I, just, I was just a bounce house. Just, just wanted to bounce everywhere, to dunk on everybody because it was a way of showing it off and it's really what I like to do. So um, started in high school, um, really hit me hard in senior year of high school. This is jumping me. They call it jumping me because I did basketball, um, football, and track all year round, all my high school life. Life football to, to football to basketball, basketball to track, and I was a long jumper and triple jumper and high jumper and track. So you know I'm basically destroying my knees. And um, what athletes hurt a lot is the cruciate, cruciate, uh, the anterior cruciate ligament in the knee, um, which is something that mo most athletes tend to hurt. And the exercises that I talk to you about today will um, help renew and strengthen those parts of the knees that you probably don't work correctly. And um, another thing to take in mind is what are the things that you do? What, where does the pain start to hurt? Is it, is it a, you know, level one where it's after intense workouts or strain, or level two where, you know, when you walk up the stairs you feel the joint pain, or level three is just like you can't do any aggressive movement. You know, you have to find that level to, you know, what you've done. If you're at level three, you're kind of at that chronic phase of that knee injury, and it's going to stuck with you for a while, for months and you know, probably need to get an MRI or get it checked out. Um, but that doesn't mean you still don't need to do these exercises to help yourself get better. Now, first thing I'm gonna start off is an effective warm up. Um, when, like I said, I, I hurt myself 2000, well, well, not hurt myself, but I had the pain in uh, 2009, well, senior year of high school, it's 2010. And um, that's when the pain started happening. And it wasn't wasn't warming up right. I just did everything cold. Started jumping cold, blah blah blah. Warming up is very important, people. You got to think about the future. And that was my problem. I didn't think about the future. I was young, and I'm still young. And I'm just like, all right, well, I got this bounce. I don't need to warm up. It was kind of like my you know, what y'all warming up for. I don't need to warm up. So yeah, started back then. Uh, didn't really get better until 2013 to be honest um, because that's when I started, started studying things uh, to help the knee. I'm like alright this is a problem because I was doing football it was bothering me in football back then a little bit um, and I would make a cut and the day after or well, later on that day my, my knees were just throbbing. So what I have done in the past years is first off a, an effective warm up which is simple it's probably like with five minutes of biking. Start out with biking, warm up effectively, get the quads warmed up, hammies, uh, you know, joints, ligaments, all lucrative, whatever, uh, loosened up and and gel gelatized, you know, because like the stuff, you know, whatever. But anyways, you want to start there, um, just five minutes of your time, and get your whole body warm, get you ready for a good workout as well. I don't care if you're working arms, you know, three or four times a week. Get on the bike before you work out, um, just to warm up effectively. So the first exercise we're going to do is what is called a eccentric eccentric load on the knee uh, on an inclined plane. And when it comes to the knee, you you're you're going to feel that pain, right? But that's a good thing. It's it's just because you're in that eccentric phase. And the eccentric phase, if you don't know, is the area where the whatever you're working out is in a a strengthening repair mode you know that's where you get strong the eccentric phase is where you get strong in a workout 
the concentric is, is you know growth but I mean it's growth both ways but that eccentric is going to give you that strength and recovery um, and that it tightens strengthens those ligaments and that's what we're aiming at right now with the incline plane and this knee joint so you get on an incline plane and you're doing a single leg squat you can do a double but I prefer single you see me on this squat machine um, just using the incline plane on that and I'm, I'm holding on and I brace myself just in case and you just want to slowly descend like eccentric slowly descend come back up use that leg that's down and come back up slowly descend five sets of five each leg nice and easy uh, it's a simple exercise that's very beneficial uh, for you and um, yeah that's really it for that um, you need to stay away from activities for a while because rest was probably my main thing because for a while I didn't do a lot I mean I was training for football but I wasn't training for football aggressively to the point to where I was you know hurting myself and um, you know sometimes I go play basketball and with, with pick up game and try to dunk or whatever and then after that session I would feel like you know uh, you know and uh, also those patellar tendon caps and stuff I don't believe those are beneficial because it it puts a space in between where it, where it shouldn't be but just to take pressure off that knee but it's not a good thing it feels good at the moment but it's not a good thing you know understand what I'm saying because you're basically creating uh, that gap between that kneecap and um, what, what what is it the patellar tendon um, I'm sorry if I'm like totally confused I don't have it all down fully but I'm trying to explain as best as I can to you guys but we'll, we'll say that for another time um, and also swimming doing running in the, in the pool uh, something I did swimming um, you know holding on to the edge doing knee ups and then from one lane to the next just trying to do a drive phase um, uh, through the pool um, what else was it um, was eccentric loaded um, leg extensions now leg extension is just like any other workout honestly is good and bad right and it's it's not that it's safe for the knee but it's not that it's not safe for the knee just like a bicep curl doesn't mean it's safe for the elbows you know you know but people think it is we all we all love to curl but you know what I'm saying these are detailed works but it can be used to strengthen certain parts of the, the quadricep which is going to be your main focal point when it comes to the knee joint and and um, getting it better the quads and the calves um, so there's an area on the quads that you really want to hit. Let me see if I can stand up and get it. It's this right inner area. Uh, if you can see it, this right inner area of the quads that you really need to release. And on top of that, the IT band, which is on that outer side of the quad that you really want to hit um, on the daily to release tension pushing into it because a lot of tightness will end up pulling that, that kneecap you know, up or out, out of position and you're going to feel that whole load because when we jump, we jump, we're not supposed to put, you know, everything on our knees or whatever. Our muscles, the muscles around it are supposed to capture it. But if the muscles are so tight around it, then it's going to end up affecting that area. Also with the calves, do calf stretches. Same thing with the, the incline plane for the, for the legs. All you got to do is just get on the incline plane, put your feet up and do a calf stretch, lean against the wall, or you know that, that other one where you're pushing against the wall and you're stretching that back calf. Those are things you need to do to release tension around the knee uh, along with the strengthening exercises. So um, that's really that on that. Oh, one last thing, walking backwards as well. I know it sounds crazy, but I've been doing walking backwards on the treadmills for uh, a few years and the benefits of it have been great, especially when it comes to like a, a balance type of deal. I have a good balance. And um, it, you know, you're working at another part of your quads of, of your legs that you don't normally work, especially walking forward. They say a thousand steps walking forward is only a hundred walking backwards because your body is not used to it. You always think everything forward, but you backwards, your body has to, your, your brain has to function a lot harder and, and faster because it's not used to that movement. Therefore, you burn more calories. Uh, I tell clients to walk backwards after their workouts. Matter of fact, on my Ultimate Athlete program, um, one of the things you'll do after a workout is do a 10-minute walk backwards. I kid you not. 
because it helps with, with things that you're not used to. It's all about working those things that you're not used to to become better. So that is really it. I mean, everything that I've just told you, please take it in hand. Um, you know, the five to 10 minute warm up on the bike, um, the five sets of five eccentric phase on the single leg incline plane. Um, and I did the, I did what, five sets of five again on the leg extension, the eccentric leg extension. But if that, it's all about pain. If that's something that bothers you um, with the leg extension, then don't do it. But with the eccentric phase on the incline plane for the legs, you're gonna feel a bit, because you really smack dab right on that patellar tendon when you're doing it. So you're gonna feel that you just gotta be consistent with it, and in time it'll start to heal and get strengthened up and get better. Um, and uh, fish oil, uh, ligament stuff, uh, um, glucosamine, those things will help um, create that shock absorbent in that area again. And uh, I mean, that's really it, guys. Um, I got for you. So, hope you enjoyed this video and the tips that I've given you to help with jumpers' knee or knee issues. And uh, hopes it works out for you. Check out these A Clan socks, though. Oh, just got in the A Clan sock and more by the most comfortable socks on earth, which are from Stride Line. All right, make sure you grab these, link will be in the description.